in this video, I wanna share with you guys how to use the Insta360, how to set it up, the best settings to use, the best movements to use, and more importantly, exactly how we would use it in our daily shoots. Now, Insta360 has sent us their new RS Dual 1 inch 360 camera to ask that exact same question. Now, if you don't know anything about a 360 camera, what it is, is it basically can see 360 degrees. So as I'm holding it up like this, I can literally see in all directions and I can change in any direction I wanna see. So I can look at myself, I can look at Matt, I can look over there, I can look up, I can look down. I can look anywhere I want to because it can see in 360 degrees. So the real draw of a 360 degree camera is that you don't really have to worry about where it's pointed because it can capture in all directions. So I have this shot here of me walking down this wall with the 360 camera and yeah, it's a 360 degree image and you can basically look in all directions. But if we take it into the editor and make it a 16 by nine image, now we have complete creative control to do whatever we want to do with this image image. We can literally start and move from right to left. We can be pointing down and looking up, or we could do like kind of a corkscrew effect. There's so many different things you can do because the creativity, what you can do with after you film is limitless. You can basically do anything that you want to. And that's what we want to do today is to take this 360 camera and be able to crop into a 16 by nine and use it for our everyday filmmaking. Getting the extended selfie stick is I would say essential for using this for professional film shoots. It really does make a huge, huge difference. You can start really high and go low. You can do all these really cool motions by getting that extended selfie stick. The movements we have found work the best would be extending the selfie stick as high as you can possibly get it and then moving up or down or left to right. Starting really low and then moving the camera upward takes it to a whole new level. I used the extended selfie stick for like 95% of my shots. Also, any sort of unique movements or places where you can like move the 360 camera through something. We just filmed a shot where Matt was sleeping in a hammock and then I pull the camera through this metal opening and then rise up to reveal the sign. Getting unique shots that you wouldn't typically see is so easy with this camera. You can even fake a drone shot super easily by just holding the camera as high as you can. So the internal stabilization takes out all those jittery movements, but if you're just bouncing up and down, that's not gonna help. So be sure to walk very carefully, or if you have a one wheel or something like that, definitely use it to get those buttery smooth shots. So one thing I love about the Insta360 is it's so discreet. So you can literally walk into a place like this and nobody will know what you're doing because it's like, you know, the size of your phone. So nobody knows that you're filming anything. And if there's no filming laws, it doesn't matter because nobody knows what you're doing. And a serious note, if you're not using the giant thousand foot selfie stick, it actually is very discreet and you can use it in places where maybe you're not allowed to, setting it on a table or just getting a real quick shot. That's our train. So because the Insta360 can see in all directions, I can actually take this scooter and ride around the city and literally just have it on my back like this. And in the editing, I might be able to like get some really cool shots and I don't even know what's happening. I'm literally just driving and able to record in all directions. So we're gonna try that, see how it works. The shots that I have found this camera excels at are establishing shots, maybe if you're establishing some sort of location, fake drone shots, if you don't have a drone, you could easily fake one, crane or jib shots like we talked about with the extended selfie stick, unique perspective shots where a typical camera would not be able to do moves like this, and one of my personal favorite, hyper energetic action shots, shots where you can get the camera really close to the action and be able to move around freely. I mean, I would totally use this camera if someone hired me to make some sort of promo for a basketball team. I would use my mirrorless camera to get the close-up detail shots, but whenever the action starts, I would switch to my Insta360 and be able to get those really, really cool shots that you wouldn't be able to typically get with your mirrorless DSLR. 
And editing 360 footage is actually really simple thanks to Insta360's studio software. Because if you put a 360 video into Premiere Pro, it's not gonna have any idea what to do with it. So we're gonna use the 360 software and then export the videos that we can then import into Premiere Pro. So once we have our video, we can click play and we can literally just look around in any direction to see 360 degrees. Now the thing that makes this studio awesome is the keyframing. So with this shot here, if we want it to start looking at matte and then at the end we show the sign and we want it to look like this, what we simply do is we find the beginning of the shot and we add a keyframe. Now, once you click keyframe, all of these parameters will come up like roll angle and you can do this sort of tilting and you can change this and that and you all this kind of stuff. And they even have presets like crystal ball or tiny planet. And what we're gonna be doing is making a 16 by nine image. And so they have a natural view, which looks like something like this but I find that this is still a little too extreme. So typically, instead of being at zero, which is the most flat look, but it can kind of make the images blurry and stretched a little bit. So I typically like to have it about 14 or 15. This does give it a natural 16 by nine look, but it just gives us a little bit more fisheye look and doesn't stretch the image too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our shot. So let's say, right here is where we want it to start. And then we're gonna go to the end of the shot, maybe something like this. And we have our next keyframe. We add that and then we turn the camera in the direction we wanna go. And now whenever we click play, the keyframes go from that one and then it shows the sign. And that's basically all you do is simple keyframing. And then we export this camera move. So we click export. We, I like to change the bit rate as high as it can possibly go just to give it the best chance to be the highest quality possible. We make it a 4K image and then we start the export. And then once it has exported that shot, we bring that shot into Premiere Pro. And now inside Premiere Pro, we have the shot with the keyframing exactly like we made it. And now we have our Insta360 footage inside Premiere Pro but they also have a tracking option which i think is actually really valuable now it might not work for every single shot uh, but in this case let's say we're going to follow the basketball so we turn on the deep track and we select the basketball and now we start tracking and so it's going to follow the basketball wherever it goes and so now with this little track we have we have this kind of cool shot of it following the basketball and again, you can keep following the basketball. Maybe it goes in and then it follows it bouncing on the ground. There's many different things that you can do with the tracking. Of course, if you wanted to keyframe it, you could make the keyframe and then just slowly you know, move it around here and there and make more keyframes. But the tracking I have found works really, really well. So guys, in conclusion, I think that the Insta360 is a very unique and powerful tool that I think filmmakers should start taking more advantage of in their everyday projects, not just for vlogging, but to intercut with DSLR footage. 